Good day everyone! Today we're going to work with triangulation method. Triangulation method allows the seismologists to locate the epicenter of an earthquake. Why do we have to know the epicenter? Just beneath the epicenter is the focus. Focus is where the earthquake started. The rocks on the focus may not be stable yet after an earthquake. So we need to warn the people in and around the epicenter for possible aftershocks. For this activity, we will be needing the following drawing tools. Pencil, a drawing compass, and the ruler. And for the worksheets, we will be needing three seismograms, distance time graph, and the working map. Suppose that an earthquake happened. The first thing that seismologists do is to secure at least three seismograms from different seismological stations. For this activity, we just have hypothetical seismogram we have from Quezon City Seismological Station, Santa Maria Bulacan Seismological Station, and last is we have a seismogram from Tanay Seismological Station. Step number two is to obtain the time difference on the arrival times of S and P waves on each seismogram. From our previous activity, we were able to practice how time difference is obtained. And this goes like this. So we have Quezon City Seismological Station, S wave arrival time is at 6.04, while P wave arrival time is at 6. And the time difference, just a very simple subtraction, is four minutes and we're going to do the same thing with the next seismogram so we have here santa maria bulacan seismological station s wave is marked by larger jump of the line so we have it here 607 there and then p wave arrival time the first jump of the line on smaller zigzag marks the arrival of P wave, which is at 6. Then subtract the S wave arrival time with P wave arrival time. Then we have obtained 7 minutes as the time difference. Next, let's have the nice seismological station. Let's just go into do the same thing. S wave arrive at there, 6, 9, P wave arrive at 6, then the time difference on the arrival time is 9 minutes. Step 3. Determine the distance of the epicenter for each seismogram using the distance time graph. In determining the distance of the epicenter from the seismological station, so we have here first the Quezon City Seismological Station, we will be needing a piece of paper. So when we are plotting the piece of paper on the distance time graph, make sure that the topmost margin aligns with the horizontal lines. So remember that our time difference is 4 minutes there that's why we need to place our paper on the top of the line for four minutes there next thing to do is to mark the line for zero mark the line for zero in your paper so the next thing to do is to drag that piece of paper across the graph in such a way that this edge and this marking landed the S wave and the P wave curve at the same time. And we need to observe the alignment of the margin, this portion of the paper, to the horizontal line and the side margin 
to the vertical line. Why? Because that will serve as the distance of the seismological station from the epicenter of the earthquake. So from here we have 3,000 kilometer plus one interval which is equivalent to 200. Therefore, the distance is 3,200 kilometers. So following the procedure of step three, we're going to obtain the following data. So for Quezon City Seismological Station, we have S wave arrival time, P wave arrival time, time difference, and a while ago, we have the distance to the epicenter, which was obtained as 3,200 kilometers. Same thing to do as with the nice seismological station. The distance to the epicenter is 7,600 kilometers. Then doing the same thing with the time difference and the distance time graph, Santa Maria Bulacan Seismological Station, we obtained 5,400 kilometers. Step number four. On the map, draw a line, which is the scaled distance from the respective seismological station. So on the map that you are going to use, there are markings like red dots, green dots, those serves as the marking for the seismological station. So from that, from that dot, you're going to draw a line. So let us work with this map. As you notice, there are three red dots. Those red dots represent the seismological stations from where we got the seismogram. Also, it uses the scaling of, for every one centimeter, it covers 1,000 kilometers. So here is how it goes. So in Santa Maria Bulacan Seismological Station, we obtain the distance to the epicenter at about 5,400 kilometers. Dividing it by 1,000, now we have 5.4 centimeters. That 5.4 centimeter will be the measure of the line that we're going to draw from the red dot. Same thing as with the nice seismological station where we obtained 7,600 kilometers, dividing it by 1,000, then we have 7.6 centimeter. Last, we have Quezon City Seismological Station where we obtained 3,200 kilometers, dividing it by 1,000, then we have 3.2 centimeters. Again, those obtained or the scaled distance will be the measure of the lines that we are going to draw from the marked seismological stations. So, remember that we are working with step number four. It says there that on the map, we're going to draw a line from the respective seismological station. This line is the scaled distance. Remember that we obtained 3.2 centimeters in Quezon City and then 5.4 from Santa Maria. And then it says there that we need to draw 7.6 centimeters from Tanay Seismological Station. So you're just going to draw a line across the map using a ruler. There. So finally, we have here step 5. Draw a circle around the seismological station. Remember that we drew the scale distance from each seismological station. This scale distance will now serve as the radius for each circle. So if we have drawn those three circles, remember that the point of intersection of those three circles that we drew across the map is the epicenter of the earthquake. So the markings of the seismological station will serve as our reference point for the scale distance that we obtained a while ago. And then there, we drew a line across the map which will serve as the radius for each circle there. And the point of intersection of these three circles is the epicenter of the earthquake.
At the start of the video, it was emphasized to use at least three seismograms. Why would it be difficult to determine the exact location of epicenter using only two seismograms? Take a look at this video where we have two circles. Notice that there are two intersections. In an earthquake, there is only one epicenter. We cannot declare these two as the earthquake's epicenter. So we will be needing another circle to define which is the exact location. Remember that the point of intersections of the tree circle will serve as the epicenter of the earthquake. So in this case, we have it in Rodriguez Rizal. Now, is it possible for an earthquake to have its epicenter in that spot? The answer is yes, because that spot lies exactly in West Valley 4. Remember that locating the epicenter of an earthquake allows the seismologist to conclude and define the full system of a location. Thank you very much and happy e-learning!